Um, so lunch is approaching. You have um, an option to learn something new in this following 10 minutes, so uh, try to stay awake. Um, my name is Adi, and I work as a data scientist at PayPal. My job is to develop machine learning models for fraud detection. And today I'm going to walk you through our journey to explain our model's decisions. The basic uh, task that our models try to solve is, given a transaction, what is the probability that this transaction is fraudulent? As our models perform better and better in production, we are looking for ways to make them even more accurate. And explainability is one option to do it. Think about a customer that tried to shop online using PayPal but couldn't complete the transaction. When we looked at the model score, we saw that the model predicted high chance for this um, transaction to be fraudulent. Assuming this is a good user and not a fraudster, the basic question to ask is why? Why had the model missed this case? Now, when we have models that are working online and taking actions on millions of users, being able to explain their predictions can be very valuable to us to improve our systems. Explainable AI, explainability, is a fast-growing field in both academia and industry. However, interpretability, explainability, and many more buzzwords, they're really used as buzzwords mostly and mean different things to different people with no one definition to what a good explanation is. And also, there are no broadly accepted metrics and evaluation methods to compare between explanations. So if we want to do explainability in practice, the first thing we have to do is to define what do we want to explain, who is going to use these explanations. There are many use cases for explanations. You can try to debug your model, you can do explanations for reg regulations or for customer-facing AI. Here, our focus is to use explanations internally as data scientists in order to debug our models and improve them. We can also improve not, also the, not only the models, but also the ecosystem that use our models if we understand better what our models are doing. So we defined, this is a joint work with Omer Zalmanson, my colleague, and we defined what is important for us in an explanation. So first, we want to explain models that are already in production so this is a post-hoc explanation, and we focus on specific predictions. So these are local explanations. We also added two more guidelines. They are informal yet. If you're in the academia, please try to formalize them. And um, that we want these explanations to be understandable to us. The data scientists, they can be technical, but they must be short. And we are not focusing on the end user right now. And we want the explanations to be actionable. They should point us to possible improvements in our models. The first thing that we explored is SHOP, but I want to go one back and make some points. So a very important point to understand now is what we are trying to explain. So we are trying to explain specific predictions of our model, and what is our goal? Our goal is to improve our models and our systems. Now we can continue. So, the first thing we explored is a very popular method for local explanations, which is called SHAP. I don't have any time to explain how SHAP works. You are really welcome to uh, read the papers and watch also uh, tutorials about it. But SHAP is based on Shapley values from game theory. And the question in game theory was actually how to split in a fair way money between players of a cooperative game. In the machine learning settings, SHAP gets as input an instance and a model and returns the contribution, how much every feature contributed to the model score. Here, if you want to use SHAP as an explanation, this is pretty straightforward. Sort the, the features according to their SHAP values, the absolute SHAP values, and just take the top 20, let's say, features, this is your explanation. I think this is a very good way to start by getting your, the story behind your prediction. You can see what features are most important, you can see what was their values and how important they are. 
However, I think that um, there is a very interesting question to ask now. So if these features are so important, for example, here in our example, you can see that um, the payment was done in an unusual time of day and the amount was relatively high. So these are the major contributors to the high model score. So does it mean that if I change these values, the model score drop? Well, not necessarily. And this is a very important thing to understand in SHAP. SHAP does not guarantee us any change in model score. SHAP guarantees something else. It's an average of the contribution of our features among all possible subsets of features. And it doesn't guarantee any change for a specific set of changes. And this is what I did here. So SHAP does not bring us a what-if understanding of our model. We cannot trust it in a what-if sense. We can trust it for something else. But if what-if is important for us, and we felt uncomfortable to use explanations to improve models when we understand that they don't have a what-if sense. So what we should do... Okay, sorry. There is something interesting here, so I just show you an example, but we actually checked it on many, many samples. We have many samples with high model score, and we try to change their features accordingly in order to reduce the model score. And as you can see, sometimes it is very hard to change the model score, even if you change 40 to 50 features. And sometimes the SHAP values, the most uh, contribution of SHAP is by much, much less features. So this is not just an example, this is really checked on um, a lot of data. So if SHAP doesn't bring us the what-if sense that we are looking for, we can try different approaches. SHAP is not the only thing out there. We tried the counterfactual explanation approach. Counterfactuals are not new, and they are very intuitive to understand. Counterfactual, we are looking for another instance. It might be a synthetic instance or something in our data set that are very close to the instance we try to explain. However, it is tagged differently. There is a large difference in model score. There are many algorithms to search for counterfactuals, and in SHAP you have some uniqueness um, guarantee, but in counterfactuals you don't have any guarantee. There is no one definition, what is the best counterfactual that you can find, or what is the best algorithm to use, but you can still use them. And what is interesting that they do bring us the what-if guarantee that we are looking for. We can be sure that if we search actively for the features that reduce our model score, so this is an explanation that provides us a what-if guarantee, they reduce the model score. This is the definition. This was, in short, our journey, highlights from our journey to look for practical explanations in our work. Our goal is to open up the black box, to debug it, to understand better our model's predictions, to investigate model misses, to make our models better. We defined what is important to us, but this is not a final uh, definition. This is an ongoing process, and I really hope things will be um, uh, more advanced uh, as the time goes by. But we started using what we have, and we started using SHAP. SHAP is a very cost-effective way to get fast insights about our, the story behind the prediction. However, if you are looking for a what-if explanation, I really recommend you to try and use insights from counterfactuals in your explanation. Now, as I hope you could see, I'm very passionate about explainability. I think this is a super interesting topic and there is a lot to do. If you are working on explainability or just have thoughts, I would be very happy to connect. Talk to me later, send me a message, and let's, let's create some uh, community of explainability here in Israel. We already started with um, Liat and Talia. And also I have a message for all of us, the data scientists. So our models are not pure black boxes. We, we, should stop do, we should stop think this. And there are tools out there. We can use them, we can pick inside our models, we can understand what they are doing better than understanding nothing, and uh, overall do a better machine learning. Thank you very much.